Good morning. We are now in Turan and uh, as you might know it's going to get a new battery uh, soon. So now I'm doing a quick capacity test of the existing battery. So it's going to be Björn Nuland style but not quite. Norm normally you're supposed to heat up the battery to like 20 degrees but since I don't have a garage I'm not able to do that. So. Um, in the end we might have to add like, I don't know, 5 or 6 percent to the capacity that's gone away as heat losses. And then here we are going to reset the trip meter and then combine it with the consumption figure to arrive at a kilowatt hour usable. And I will be driving very unspirited to create as little heat losses as possible. So maybe just drive behind a semi or something. All right, we've made it past the halfway point and uh, it's looking pretty good. So we've got 58% left in the battery. We've done 87 kilometers and the consumption is 155 watt hours per kilometer. And um, well, as all consumption meters, this one is very optimistic because that's the easiest to program. So it, um, it neglects the discharge losses or the heat losses that build it as, uh, that are generated in the battery, so it only measures what actually makes it out of the battery. And likewise, if we're regening, it um, it accounts for the heat losses because well, actually more energy is put into the battery than it actually stores. The rest again is lost as heat. Yeah, so suffice to say, this is a bit optimistic, and the faster we go, the more optimistic it'll be because the heat losses increase. So that's why I was driving dog slow. Um, let's see if we can find the average speed. Yeah, 87, no, that's the distance. Uh, 66 uh, kilometers per hour, so I, I was using the cruise control on the highway at 90 kilometers per hour. And um, yeah, and then the last bit was country road driving. Goody! Um, so, I will not charge here as I usually do, and I will try to make it back on this battery. Um, and you might think, well, uh, you, you only used uh, 42% so far, but uh, the last 10% are a bit of a gamble with the Nissan BMS. Actually, in the Nissan Leaf, the last 10% are hidden and displayed as uh, zero. Um, yeah, we will see. We will see. And 172 kilometers later, we are back at the starting point. And yeah, consumption is still 156 watt hours per kilometer. And we are down to roughly 18%. So that's uh, how much? 80. No, 77% of the battery use because we started at 99. So I will do a quick calculation how much that is. And one thing uh, I really like is that the cell delta between the highest and the lowest is pretty much even across the entire SOC range. So all cells seem to be aging evenly. All right, I did a quick calculation. Of course, it's 81 percent, not 77. And yeah, according to that, we would have 33 kilowatt hours available of the 40 original. And yes, just keep in mind, um, we probably eat, need to add like 10% to this because uh, it doesn't account for voltage sag. So that said, we would be at 36 available, perhaps. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I won't charge overnight. I will uh, completely empty the battery tomorrow and then we will have another calculation. So I've decided to end this charging test at a special location because today charging a Tesla supercharger allegedly is free. Um, okay, the last 10 kilometers here, consumption was a bit higher because it's all uphill, but in total we've done 190 kilometers and uh, yeah, there's 9% left. So I doubt these 9% would actually get us anywhere because the voltage, uh, cell voltage is now pretty low, but as you can see, it's, uh, no, no, it's going slightly out of balance. We've got 100 millivolt uh, difference, but yeah. That's what happens towards the end. And we also got a power limit. Normally it's 125 kilowatts. Now it's 77. Let's charge. Great. We are charging at the preset low charging speed to not overload our pesky hardware back there. Let's see how many kilowatt hours we can put in. 
All right, we've reached the 10 kilowatt hour mark and we have put 35 minus 9 uh, is 26% in. So from that perspective, we would have 40 kilowatt hours. So I think we will later take the average between um, the charge energy and the discharge energy and then say that is the remaining capacity of the battery. Because that kind of weighs the the temperature losses in both ways. And we should also take into account that the charger reports 372 volts and the BMS reports 365 uh, volts, so 7 volts less. That's about a 2% loss in the dodgy cabling, which we will deduct later. Alright, I've now reached uh, 94% and the Tesla app shows 33.5 kilowatt hours. We will do the number crunching later. Now let's take off because the DC DC converter has shut off due to over voltage. All right, we are back at the office and now let's take a look at uh, the math. So on average, we had a consumption of 159 watt hours per kilometers. So the longer trip was 155 both ways and then the short trip to the charging station was a bit more and I've averaged these two arrived at 159. We've driven a total distance of 190 kilometers and we used 30.12 kilowatt hours according to this multiplied by this. Um, we used the SOC range from 99% to 9% so we used 90% of the um, available capacity and keep in mind the Nissan BMS um, has no top or bottom buffer so 100% is actually 4.2 volts and 0% is 2.5 volts floating voltage so according to that we've got 33.4 or 5 kilowatt hours available when we're discharging but now we have to keep in mind that the battery was pretty cold, so quite a lot of energy was used to actually heat it up and never made it out of the battery. And this is not contained in those 33.5 kilowatt hours. Now, to um, average that out, we also went with a, a pretty cold battery to the quick charger and we charged 32.8 kilowatt hours. And that already takes into account the 2% losses that um, occurred in the cabling of the Chudemo adapter. Actually, the charger counted 33.5. Okay, but only 32.8 made it into the battery. We charged from 9% back to 94%, which is a difference of 85%. And this gives us an available uh, capacity of 38.6%. Again, there's heat losses in there, but this time in the positive direction. So if we average the discharge and the charge test, so the 38.6 and 33.5 figure, we arrive at an average of 36 kilowatt hours that should be available. And the nominal figure is 40 kilowatt hours, so this would um, work out to a state of health of 90.1%. Good. Um, yeah, I hope this is kind of transparent. Um, I will be dismantling the battery, in fact, on Monday or Tuesday. And then I will start to fit the new one. And I think if I decide not to use this battery in the next A2 project, I will actually put it up for sale. So if you're interested in that, I will put a link down below into the classified section of the Open Inverter forum. Good. That's all I have to say about the capacity of the used Nissan Leaf battery. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.